Coleman? Here. Bruce Aladucci? Here. Bill Henderson? Neil Lyon? Jeff Glossman? Here. Jeff Reducci? Here. Bert Cherry? Here. Mayor Pat Blasio? Here. Thomas McDermott? Marie Collins? Here. Chad King? Joe Seitz? Bill Chilio? Here. Dan Miller? Uh, there are no visitors, so uh, first order of business, the 2018 proposed budget review. A review of the 2018 proposed budget all funds. We want to do the present, the PowerPoint first? Nice one. Okay. Joe, can you add those two lights? All right, so the Finance Committee put together a little PowerPoint. Uh, when we were working on the different things, just as a highlight, this is just a draft. Please, it's just a draft. Well, we thought it might be a good thing to put on our website, on our Facebook page, well, maybe not Facebook page, but have it accessible on, on explaining to the public what we're looking to do. And, and we start off on the presentation uh, uh, with some accomplishments. Uh, so, for example, uh, some of the accomplishments we've done is that uh, we had the PennDOT Greenlight uh, Go Grant of 218000 uh, by converting all the street lights to LED. We've saved over 38000 and obviously the task force uh, with PennDOT is making a lot of progress on, on the Chartier Street and, and Bridge. Um, some other uh, ones, obviously, uh, in the, uh, the good news that we've uh, done with the uh, uh, the great save that uh, Ray and, uh, and uh, Matt uh, did with the police and the fire department for, uh, um, for that save with the car that exploded. Um, in addition to some of the other accomplishments, the Byer Hill Road paving project, uh, the sanitary uh, sewer repairs and lining. Uh, of course, we did the Task 1 Baldwin Street, uh, that group did that. Uh, the MS4 water compliance is still going going and or he's going to buy some more Tylenol uh, stock. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and then obviously we did some of our payment pro improvement projects as well as we created a new borough website and Facebook page uh, this last uh, year. Um, and last but not least some of the other accomplishments, minor ones, uh, we had a very successful day in the avenue. You can see uh, Mike Tolmer's picture up there in the in the dunk tank, um, and uh, we uh, had a scout approach us uh, to consider renaming the alley um, Eagle Way, uh, which was kind of a neat thing for all the scouts that are on, uh, what is that, Chestnut and Greg, uh, that have been there. Um, and the public safety, uh, Bridgeville Police has been a, a very big leader and has gotten a lot of positive press on using uh, social media to influence the, uh, uh, the community in solving crimes. Uh, they've had over 3,500 calls in, uh, through October, and uh, also at Community Day, they gave away 143 bike helmets that they uh, were received. What was that, a grant or something, more? Um, and then the fire department had 428 hours of training, uh, as well as responded to 160 calls through October. Um, the large expenses that we had in 2017, uh, we had the, the Byer Hill Paving Project, of course, uh, the maintenance program, the MS4 work, uh, the sanitary sewer lining, uh, the liability coverages, uh, the health insurance, and then obviously the money that we have to uh, put in the capital improvement account uh, for the upcoming projects that we've committed uh, money. So, I mean, we're talking over um, almost $1.7 million in expenses that we went through this year uh, on different things. Um, as far as plans for 2018 that we have been uh, told, uh, we gave a laundry list to the Finance uh, Committee and uh, we want to restore some of this building. Uh, it's starting to get old. I uh, want to do some of those things. Uh, the Adaptive Street Lightning Grant is uh, coming very soon. Uh, additional MS4 compliance work needs to be done. Uh, the police have uh, uh, requested uh, us to consider a police car. Uh, there's some updated equipment that the public works needs. Uh, we're looking at security cameras based on the little things that have gone on in the last couple of years in the community parks and from what we've heard from the public works continues to go on. Uh, then the Task 2 uh, Baldwin Street Corridor Project 
the Chartier's Park Comprehensive Plan. Um, in the collective bargaining agreement, uh, wages are going to be increased. Uh, the uh, final project uh, for the McLaughlin grant that we've uh, gone through. Uh, the Chartier's Expansion Project, Washington Avenue uh, Bridge Widening Project, and uh, additional sanitary sewer line, the install of backflow preventers on Baldwin Street and pavement maintenance project. Uh, I need to take a deep breath right now for all the <laughs> things that we uh, have plans for. So what does that mean for all those things that we've added? And I'm sure there's plenty more that we have. Um, in addition, you know, put some numbers to those. And, and I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but we're looking at another 1.6 million uh, in, in different expenses that are going to be involved again uh, that we have. Uh, so, so we got we have a lot of things as we anticipate it coming again this coming year. Um, as you can see, in two, just as a snapshot of 2014 through 17, really money uh, as far as revenues, they really haven't changed much. Uh, we have a little bit of a, uh, a number difference in 2016 and 17 with that plus six percent, and, and then 17 we're anticipating the getting to the budget where it's going to be negative six percent. So there's kind of a wash out there. Uh, but we really haven't increased revenues uh, um, in quite a number of years. Uh, and so that is one of the concerns because of these other expenses coming up. Because as you can see from the last three years, four years, uh, the expenses continue to come up. Now on the budget for 2017, we do not have what in there for yet. The, the capital improvement money. The capital improvement transfer. So once we do the capital improvement transfer for 17, this number is going to be, it's not going to be that negative 14. It's going to be a higher number as well. But that wasn't an expense. We didn't want to show that on here. Um, but you're, you're talking that there's going to be some significant expense increases as well as, heck, last year at the same time we sat here saying that one of these days it's going to come up and we're going to have to look at, at, at the different things. So what does that tell us? In 2017, if we did nothing, we're estimating that the taxes that we bring in, minus the expenses, we're going to have a deficiency. So we're going to have almost $150,000 deficiency, and that does not help build our, our funds for the monies that we need for those projects to come up, uh, and the emergency ones especially. So uh, what we're, uh, the Finance Committee has bring to the, uh, to the council is to consider raising the building millage, well first of all, splitting the millage between the building and the land. So you're having two separate taxes instead of one just on the full value of the property, tax on the land, and then tax on the building. <clears throat> um, the, if we do this by increasing the millage, uh, one mill on the building and four and a half mills on the land, this will increase the revenue of approximately 100, and, or excuse me, $365,000. That's an estimate. We've been running numbers and doing all kinds of things, but that's that's a pretty pretty comfortable number of where we think will help us. So increase it to one mil or no? Increase it okay. a mil. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean to a property owner? If just using a, a property owner has a hundred thousand dollar value house, uh, in 2017 they pay five hundred and fifty dollars in taxes. Okay, that would increase by changing how we we're handling the millage uh, rates. Uh, that would increase their taxes up to seven hundred and fifty nine dollars and twenty cents, or two hundred and nine dollars. Okay, uh, one of the things that we'd like to look to do is. Um, give a discount to the residents that live in Bridgeville. So if you have the Homestead Exemption Act, or the Homestead Exemption with Allegheny County, with the county, we're going to honor that as well. And so therefore, we're going to give you a $12,000 Homestead Exemption if you own your property and you live in that property. So our residents of Bridgeville, uh, which then equates to uh, a deduction of another $78 on your taxes. So therefore, your, the increase of your taxes is, is going to be about $130 on a $100,000 house. Um, just in a summary, uh, with the upcoming uh, capital projects, and approximately $800,000 is needed to, to complete those. 
Uh, our cash reserves need to be uh, prepared for these expected expenditures ex as well as the unexpected ones. Uh, at the end of 2017, we're going to be at the lowest that we have been in our reserves of 700000 in years. And we uh, said that it's been a significant amount of time that we've been this low. Uh, many projects need to be undertaken uh, that require match funding. For us to be able to get grants and to be able to fund some of these different things, we need to have some matching funds in those. So the bottom line is, uh, that, uh, is basically is that we need to increase uh, the bottom line to, to move forward with the new projects, especially for the next few years. Uh, so we're looking to, to increase taxes this year, um, is a nutshell, and, and, and pretty much uh, trying to uh, do what's right for the borough um, by making sure we're financially sound. Any questions from what I, I had in the slide? There's some talk also of considering some for the fire department um, introducing a tax to help them out. It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Okay. Okay. What I'd like to do is just email this to everybody. Uh, if you have any comments or things that you would like to see change, um, I'm out up for anything. I mean, I think that we need to have something out in the public so they're they're aware of why we're doing it as well as some of the information just to have good communication. It's really well done. Um, yeah, if I could just add, you know, uh, the committee met, but, but Joe and Lori have put a lot of work in this, and I think it tells the story. It tells our story, and yeah, we may, we may be coming to the table uh, for everyone to contribute a little more this year. But there's some reasons why, and I think visually, when you see it, yep. you understand. So, very well done. Yeah. Very well. Everything everybody's come to us about is they want us to do this and want us to do that. And at least this gives us some flexibility to move forward with that and uh, take on some projects that we've been trying not to get into too deep because we didn't have the money at the time. So, so very good, Joe. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Can I ask you a question? I'm just curious. What's the benefit of switching light from the land you know, buildings and whatnot? Well, one of the one of the things that, that uh, we have a lot of land in Bridgeville Borough that is not um, being developed. Um, this hopefully will encourage maybe some of that land to be developed to get a return on the land as well. So then, therefore, it could help us as well as help the owner um, be able to generate some more tax revenue for the borough too. So that that was one of the focuses. Was we have some land that's not really doing anything for us other than being land. So if you could develop that more, then we'd have an assessment of that property, which then could be a more revenue for the borough, but as well as more, uh, you know, make it a residential, make it a commercial property. It'll bring in more economics into the borough. You know how many communities in Allegheny County do this? I don't think we're that many, but. To, to split it? Yeah. Um, it's kind of been an interesting conversation. There hasn't been that many. Yeah, not in Allegheny County, but and, and I, the memo that I distributed earlier in the year, I, I attached uh, uh, some charts on it. It's actually more prevalent in Al East for some reason. I'm not sure why. But it's certainly authorized under the, the borough because as long as the combination doesn't exceed the maximum commitments. Yeah, the bottom line, we need the revenue. It's just a matter of how you get it, I guess. So. Okay, thank you. All right. Moving on. Can you have a question? I'm, I'm done. Right. And Laura can do her normal work. All right. Okay. Um, I read a memorandum and then we just, we just, instead of going line item by line item, I'll just go through the memorandum and if you have any questions regarding that, that uh, line item or that group of, if it's real estate taxes, local enabling taxes, licenses and permits, um, you know, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, right now, um, the real estate taxes 
current year are calculated by the um, increase of, of one mil for the for the buildings and uh, you know the, the uh, what is it four and a half four and a half four and a half for the land I went blank so that's what we have in our real estate property taxes current year minus two percent for delinquencies and then of course you have at 301 103 the current discount which is another two percent so you don't have the, the entire amount of okay. it um we talked about the uh the homestead exemption uh with the budget with the Miller exchange, the budget contains projected revenues of three million two hundred fifty thousand eight hundred thirty dollars and expenditures of two million nine hundred ninety six dollars three hundred eighty seven dollars and forty eight cents. Difference of two hundred fifty four dollars four hundred thirty two dollars and fifty two cents revenues versus expenditures. The projected general fund balance at the year end two thousand seventeen is approximately seven hundred sixty one thousand which is the lowest that we've been in years. We normally end the year at about a million five, but in the past, I haven't transferred the money yet for 2017 to the capital improvement fund, but for the past few years, we, um, we've earmarked $800,000 to move to the capital improvement fund for all, everything that's upcoming. So that's why we've got such a, you know, uh, a low cash on hand. Yeah. Yes. Does the 761 include the amount that's in the capital improvements fund? No. So how much is in the capital improvement fund? I can I can look at that for you. Okay, in the capital improvement fund, the cash on hand after paying for Bower Hill Road, mm -hmm. of which we have not got, gotten a final invoice for that, but I've estimated that. Mm -hmm. So the cash on hand is $710,408, and that will include the $494,782 that we've transferred in the year 2017. Okay, that's in the capital improvements fund. Right. And then there's another $700 in cash on hand? Usually you in our reserves, we have a, we'll have approximately seven hundred and seventy-one thousand, approximately, mm -hmm. ending the year in our cash reserves, not earmarked for anything, and in the capital improvement fund, earmarked for many projects that we have coming next year. We have an estimated cash on hand after paying the Bower Hill Road um, project of 710408 and and that's a close estimate. Right, so at the end of the year, between the capital improvements fund and the cash on hand, mm -hmm. it's going to be about a million four mm -hmm. that's going to be sitting there at the end of the year, approximately. Yeah, yeah our, our project should start moving in right. 2018. I know the adaptive projects will start moving. Um, we may, if if the bridge is delayed, we may be able to start the Chartier Street project mm -hmm. in lieu of waiting for the bridge, which will be another 288000 coming out of there. If there was 200000 sitting there for um, the bridge, we, we uh, have $215,512 sitting there waiting for the walk and run project, mm -hmm. which took very long because the DCNR lost all of our uh, contract paperwork. So as we were sitting waiting for them to send that back so that we could bid it, mm -hmm. they lost everything. So we had to resubmit and that's why it took so long. So that project will begin this year. <laughs> so out of that million four that would be there, mm -hmm. we have 215 <coughs> going from McLaughlin mm -hmm. uh, Park. Mm -hmm. right. Approximately what sixty thousand for the adaptive? It's fifty-three three twenty. Fifty-three three twenty. Yeah. Two hundred thousand for the south end. Right. Chartier Street and 
Right, if you take a look at page two of the capital improvement um, projects, it's pretty easy. There's 200,000 for the bridge, 53,000, 320,000 for the adaptive lighting. The capital project for McLaughlin, there's 215,512 on our end and then their end mm -hmm. because it's 50 50. And the capital project for Chartier Street, there's 288,000 coming out of our money and 300,000 on shown on the revenue side um, for the uh, for the grant. That's the part I can't quite get my hand head around. So there's 300 coming in and 288 going out. No, 588. Going 588 out. going out. Yes. So it comes down to our expected part of that is 200,000. 288. 300 plus 288, 588. Okay. It's on page uh, two of the capital improvement um, budget. You'll see capital project Chartier Street, 588,000 going out, and you'll see. The GEDF grant on page one, 300,000 coming in. So there'll be 300,000 coming in for that project okay. and 588,000 going in. Gotcha. Now I understand the McLaughlin as well. You've got to take that miscellaneous government grant right. off of. Okay, that's what I was confused about. Yeah. I came back and no problem. It actually, Thank you. Uh, it actually took me a little while to do <laughs> So what we have going out in capital is two. Four hundred and four hundred ninety-four seven eighty-two. I think it is. Okay. So call it roughly five hundred thousand. Yeah. Leave us with nine hundred thousand in reserves. Yeah. If you start with a million four, you take five hundred off of it. We're going to be approximately nine hundred thousand in reserves uh, at the end of eighteen. I'm estimating about seven hundred seventy-one thousand. Okay. Yeah. If and right, because you had the you had the deficit to begin with. Yeah. So that's what you yeah. were, that $136,000 deficit okay. was lining, lining up for you. Right, and then mm -hmm. um, as, as we move along, um, we've contributed the 800000 to the capital improvement fund in the past two years, and uh, we will still be required this year to contribute $45,424 to budget the fund for the upcoming improvements in 2018. Mm -hmm. So there's still going to be $45,424 that needs to be place in the fund saying everything happened next year. We would need that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if everything doesn't happen next year, I guess that, that can always be put off. But say if everything happened next year, we would need that 45 or 24. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the just just the, in general, the 2018 budget includes contractual wage increases of four and a half percent for all departments for the year ending December 31st, 2018, and continues the 15 percent of deductible employee contributions to the medical medical expenses. Um, when you take a look at the mercantile taxes, I'm jumping around a little bit. This is page one of the general fund. I have highlighted mercantile taxes and business privilege taxes. I've raised those revenues a bit because we have been um, lucky enough to um, be obtaining a little more than we have in the past as far as those, those two uh, revenue streams go. So I've raised those a little bit. Um, on page two on the general fund, I just wanted to point out miscellaneous insurance reimbursements. It's highlighted. Um, this year we received $129,729.32. Um, we normally receive money from the two trusts that we um, are in the liability trust and workers' comp trust. Um, that money normally comes in April and it's around 70 to, 70 to $71,000. The rest of that money have been reimbursements from workers' comp for partial payment for Roger's um, absence this year. He's been on workers' comp. So we've been paid $1,776 every two weeks for Roger's workers' compensation. And we've been paying him out of the general fund with no taxes um, withheld. So we're getting some of those money, monies back. And just as a, I know that's it, it's an expenditures, but I don't understand it because 
our workers' comp rates went down 20% this year. And I just don't understand it because Roger's been on workers' comp all year. So I really think we're going to get him in 2019 when they finally catch up. <coughs> no, I'm not asking. I'm not asking. And as far as uh, as far as revenues, there there isn't really much change as far as the revenues go. If anybody has any questions regarding those, I actually did note. Um, you know, we still are we still are at the. Uh, on page one, we still are at the look of service taxes. We're at fifty-two dollars, and we um, take into consideration uh, individuals are in twelve thousand dollars or less who are exempt from the tax. And we've received more than we ever have as far as um, earned income tax with uh, five hundred twenty-eight thousand last year, which it keeps going up and up every year. Foreign fire insurance, um, which is paid to us and paid directly to the fire department, it's $24,960 this year. That is paid directly to them. I normally budget the same amount because we're not sure exactly what we're going to get. Um, so that that has been budgeted for the foreign fire insurance. State pension aid, same thing. Um, it, the rates go up, the rates go down, I budgeted. $110,118 for our state of pension aid, which we received this year. Um, we uh, the general fund obligation to the pension fund for 2018 is approximately $19,407, less than anticipated. So in previous years, we've had to add to the police pension to meet the MMO. And this year, we will not. Has so that, that happened in the recent years? Um, it used to, the police pension MMO was zero for many years and the police did not have to contribute to their pension fund. And then when they had to start to contribute, then we had to start to contribute. Right. But um, with the increase in the state aid, um, I think that that's helped us a lot, so. Because okay. I was surprised to hear that. Yeah, yeah. You were also saying you know, that you're going down from eight, which is the maximum that the police have to contribute, down to seven. Well, we, it's, under uh, it's under review. Um, Tom took a look at that and sent it to Randy Rose, who yeah. is our expert on uh, police pensions, and it may, it may stay at 8%. Yeah. That's what I was questioning. Yeah. It There's still review. It's, it's a timing thing because of the timing of the MMOs and whatnot. Right. They stack or so. so you just. There may be delayed reaction. Yeah. yeah. So we're waiting to hear what his okay. what his final determination is, and then we'll take it from there. I mean, he's a he's a pension man, so mm -hmm. we, we want our pension fund to be sound. So we'll take his word for it and Tom's. Right, and he's consulting with the actual well. Yeah, he's talking to Frank Calvin. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's a complicated Mr. crystal ball. Yes, it is. <laughs> you just never know. Miscellaneous, miscellaneous insurance uh, reimbursements, I already went through that. And then just uh, line on this 391 and 1 and 1 and 2 for sanitary sewer fund reimbursements and garbage wage reimbursements. Sanitary sewer fund re wage reimbursements have gone way down because of Jordan tax. And uh, uh, outside contractors doing a lot of the, of the work on the uh, sanitary sewers. So that is the end of the revenues as far as general fund goes. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. I'll move ahead to expenditures again, four and a half percent wage increases. No noticeable changes in the administration budget. Only thing is advertising. Since the troop um, decided to dissolve, we have to uh, advertise with the Post Gazette. I put it in the extra south on Fridays, which is cheaper, but it's still more expensive than the trip ever was. So they get to the point where we don't have to advertise and like post it online. Or they they were working on that. Municipalities are lobbying for that. They're lobbying that, but they they still haven't done that. 
We do actually post everything online now on right. the website, but that doesn't meet the criteria that we still have to have for these. That could happen this year? It could happen. I don't know. They've been working on it for a while. Yeah, they've been they working on the radars too. Yeah. Lori, <laughs> <laughs> okay. is this the, uh, Every year is the third year of this contract coming up? Uh, for, as far as the for, uh, collective bargaining yeah. agreement? Yeah, we'll be, we'll be, uh, we'll, we will be, we just finished this thing. Uh, 2018. Yeah, so 2018 is the third year, so yeah. negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it does. She's <laughs> yeah, but seriously, it seemed like we were just we just did it. Uh, if you flip over to page two on the expensive, I just on the expenses, I just highlight the tax collectors fund only because you're only going to see that every four years. We share the cost with the school district, so it's seventeen hundred and seventy-one dollars. So that'll be paid. Um, as far as uh, workers' comp goes, as I said, that went down twenty percent. Hospital hospitalization went up one percent, which was uh, very surprising and uh, happily accepted. Um, as far as the consulting and web, it, that was a ten six when we were um, when we were putting together our new website. Um, I placed it at five hundred dollars. Now we're working on it on growing our text alerts. And working with them and doing that, and then we pay sixty dollars a month in maintenance. As far as them, I send them something and they put it on. So, Lori, can I make a comment on that? Sure. I think it's about time the borough starts televising these meetings on their own, putting it on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, things seem to be going relatively well. There's nobody but the people to watch it. <coughs> At the last election, things got very nasty as far as the website went. You know, I was under the impression it was supposed to be an informational type thing. The political ads, there was debating rather nasty debates going on back and forth on that thing. And I just don't think it's right. I think the boroughs should do it. If they want to continue on, that's their right. But I believe the borough should be doing this on our own. I think that's a wonderful idea. I'm sure you do, Pat. It's so that's our food can you, you, you looked at that the last time. Pardon? Bill looked yeah, at that the uh, last time. And, and there was some reception from the high school. They have a, a class up there that they have some uh, equipment and things like that that they consider doing it for us. And mm -hmm. the program never really got off the, the floor. Um, but there are some options out there to have that done. Uh, okay, well, we, we're at 5,000 right now. What, what, what would you like to do with that number? I have no clue what it costs. I, I don't you know, maybe you could ask our webmaster. Well, I, I, I have a business client that um, does that professionally. Okay. And if she did posts two, three times a week, it was like $250 a month. That uh, has nothing to do with the, but uh, what I've, from business clients, she'll do, hey, what kind of subjects do you want to mm -hmm. talk about on your Facebook page this month? Mm -hmm. And so she'll plan them out and do them a nice professional thing and, okay. uh, you know, all the digital art and all those different things, but um, I could ask her if she's interested in something like that. I, you know, okay. but, but as far as the video, I have no and we already got the website going, which is fine. It's working pretty well, I think. But uh, it's time. I mean, I've looked at years ago. I used to watch Carl used to televise their meetings. There was never anything like that. They put public events on. But it, uh, it's like Fox News. It was that last election. I, I don't understand you guys. It's whatever. If you're, looking, it down the top. If, if you're looking for how much it would cost, I think Tim's sitting back there, yeah. you know, can give you an idea as to how much it is to provide the service to the borough. You know, I'll only, only look into it and see if we can get it for something for uh, December's meeting. I figure we could talk about it. You have to do a number now. 
right? We'll have to do a number now because... You have 5000 in there now, you said? Right? Yeah. Yeah, because at the December's meeting, we're going to be adopting the budget. Tim, so. what's a good number? What are you looking for precisely? Just video. Just the video. Video, Just post. What would it cost them to get the video to post up on the on the site? This exact thing that I'm doing now. Yeah. And everything. Give me a minute on the number. I'll get back to you. Okay. You yeah, come back. Yeah. Meantime, I'll, I'll readdress it with the school to see if that okay. group has gone anywhere in the last couple of years with that. Because I, as I recall, I don't believe there was a cost to it. Yeah. yeah. One thing I did find, though, because early on, before Tim, was the idea, okay, we'll get somebody to just do it. Remember, yeah. Yeah. there was somebody earlier on that would just show up and do it? It didn't work, because you needed somebody that was going to do it, you know, professionally. Um, you know, the early people that we had doing it, it worked. you couldn't rely on them because they weren't doing it professionally. So I just pass that on. And the, uh, the school district, you know, has their own problem in trying to get, you know, their, you know, somebody to do those kinds of videos. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they have a problem or not. Yeah. I mean, we just, I mean, it would be great if they did. It would be the you same know. thing as you put a tape and have a camera. We can have a mount a camera and play and just hit play. It, the recorder. Which is another and option. Two buttons. <coughs> do two buttons. <laughs> yeah, <no worries. laughs> Maybe something a little extra to pay for. All right. Okay. okay we'll come back to that one then. All right. As far as engineering, that hasn't changed. Um, buildings. Um, if you go to page number three, the only thing that um, is different on there is uh, 409 751 building maintenance. We've got some maintenance that has to be done on the building. There's exterior maintenance, concrete work in, at the front of the police department. We have foundation work. We have to do awning work. And then that includes carpeting on the inside of the building, which we desperately need. So um, when we go to the police department, um, line item 410-113, that is not highlighted, but I just calculated and cut longevity checks today. And what happens with the longevity is along with the 4.5% increase, you've also got an increase each year that they work here. There's a percentage of increase of their um, pay. So their pay goes up and the years worked goes up. So I was surprised by the amount that uh, I cut today. So. That line item needs to be changed to 27000 to meet the requirements for next year. That's 410-113. It's the first one under the police. 27000 so? Yes. Give me that final number. 27000 yeah, I had the 23.5, I cut, the checks that I cut, uh, that we cut today were, were 23.5 today, so. Yeah. But, the next but that's thing. actually a good story. Yeah. We're keeping people. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. there was a lot of turnover. There, back, back, back when that was implemented, yeah, we were yeah. going through a guy every couple of years. Yeah, and, and yeah. they're all, it, it's funny because I, I, I had to look at it twice because I thought, Wait a minute. Yeah, you, you put you put uh, it's under a line item in their pay, so I can see what they got last year. And then I was I was like, I have to be calculating this wrong, but it isn't because they're here longer. Plus, the yeah. wages went up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, and we have a, we have quite a few guys that are here over twenty years. So, you know, it naturally but just. I can't go Naturally We're spending out. fortune in uniforms every day. I know bringing new people on the cost of that was crazy. Yep, training and everything else. Yeah. Okay, and as, and as far as um, page four on the uh, general fund, the only thing I've highlighted there is 410 750. 
have a capital outlay for a new vehicle, which is $45,116. Um, the Finance Committee did request that the Police Department give us numbers on a, a sedan versus a uh, SUV, and it was only a couple thousand dollars difference. Um, this will be um, coming from TriStar, it'll be a 2017. That includes all of the upfitting, um, they need new cameras, um, the graphics, um, everything. So, and they are in stock, so um, in January they would be able to start, um, to, you know, to start the process forward, so. And we did skip last year, we did not buy a car last year, right. so right. the last two years, we missed two years. Mm -hmm. Because when we were negotiating budget, that would remember that's right. Although I did notice that in 2015, a same vehicle was only 38000 <laughs> yeah, Well, the, um, the actual vehicle, I, I, think the, I think it's the equipment because of all the new camera stuff. That yeah, they, yeah, it's all yeah the, the, the actual it's cost the, of the SUV is $28,145. And then the upfitting is eighty nine forty six. The camera system is fifty three seventy five. The decals are seven hundred, and extended warranty is nineteen fifty. So that's where you, that's where you get into your stickers. That's cheap, actually. The stickers. <laughs> Our previous extended warranty is paid for yourself. Yeah, that's cool. 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 Yeah, as far as the fire department, nothing has changed. Zoning, nothing has changed. Um, I did again include a 414-123 building inspection as far as having to pay the building inspector for the five-story building that I don't know if it's coming or it's not. Um, I haven't heard anything as of um, today, so that's included in there. It's also included on our revenue side. Under planning commission. Go back to that for one second. Um, I know in Cecil, like we just finished a project there, we had to post a bond for a million dollars and they drew down on that mm -hmm. with all those inspections. Mm -hmm. Do we get reimbursed for those inspections? What happens with the inspections is we are our contract with them is 80-20. Okay. So the build the building um, if the building permit and the inspections is two thousand dollars. They'll get 80% and we'll get 20% 20, okay. 20 of that. Okay. But it is collected in whole from the. Yeah, from it's, the, it's from collected the up front. From the okay. Yes. okay. Yes. So they'll calculate everything that, you know, everything that they need to uh, in one lump sum. And then there won't be any extra charges. Just, excuse my ignorance on this. It looks like we're spending money to. To have that bill. To have that bill. Yeah. Okay. We I get we get twenty percent of and and then and then uh, they get eighty okay. percent. So we're Good. really not spending money. We're getting twenty percent of it. Okay. They get a hundred percent just that they get eighty of the hundred. Yes. Yeah. And because they, the contractor's got to pay for it. Right? So. And then if you match that with the expenditures for permit fees received and all that, it should yeah. match it, it okay. kind of. Okay. Itself and then we also, as you know from your experience on the street, I guess get reimbursed for the engineer fees, the inspection fees on the site. Right, right. They have to, they have to the an escrow account and that type of things. So. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Um, as far as uh, 415, 450, that's at the bottom of page four. That's consulting fees. I did include task two for the Bowery, the, the Baldwin Street Corridor project, and that includes the, I think it was 13. Just task two? They asked for two and three. Yeah. So we only did task two. The, committee, next one. the committee recommended task two. How much, could, how much was task three? Um, so I actually have it. Or yeah. It's Okay, task three is $13,488. Okay. Um, 
plus meeting, a couple thousand dollars. So another fifteen thousand, maybe or fourteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up up to you whether you want to add that in or not. We. I still keep it where we're at now. Well, I think part of the committee said was, you know, they got through phase one in a year. Yeah. They get through phase two in a year. And just keep going. Just keep yeah. That's why we approved the one. Or we suggestible. Okay. Um, on page five, uh, as far as uh, public works goes, there isn't anything uh, unusual in public works. The only thing that I do need to change is um, on uh, 130, 430, 124, I have temporary manpower at $1,000. It needs to be changed to 4800 4800 Yes. These are all going up, Lord. Mm -hmm. We need ones that go down. <laughs> <laughs> I know, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as far as bulk salt goes, we are in great shape as far as salt goes. We actually have to buy 67 ton by the end of December, um, or they will start to charge us to store it. Um, so the guys are making some room down there. We do like a salt day in Bridgeville where everybody comes down. <laughs> Bring your five gallon puck and get a five gallon puck of salt out. And that would be an interesting question. Really? You know, because we have too much. Yeah. Or not. What? Or not. Don't say we have. Or not, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, get you have to use it on the sidewalks. Yeah. Normally, I reserve 900 ton, of which we have to purchase 125. We, we can purchase 125% of that, of that at our 6929 price. Um, we have to purchase 80%. So what I did was I took it down to 200 ton. So <clears throat> I reserved 700 ton. So we only have to purchase 80% of that, but we can go up to 125% of that. So um, we should be able We should be able to do it. Excuse me, Excuse me, Laura. He, he just never we were thinking about building that block Sheltered on there for the salt. That we are going to do that. Okay. Yeah, we are going. In fact, I talked to, um, I was just talking to Bill Bott about that. And they're actually going to build it around the railroad ties because the railroad ties stop the salt from reaching the concrete, which damages the concrete. So they are going to do that. They're supposed to get me an estimate. That was like a tent affair. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're going to get a larger um, uh, cover cover for it. But they actually got a, a pretty good one, and we we didn't lose a lot of salt this year. Um, it's been well covered and whatever. But per the DEP, we have to get a better setup down there, and the covered um, ice dome was too high to 79. Um, they would have made us move it every time they needed to do anything, so we couldn't fit it down there. So that went down, down the tubes. Um, one positive thing that I can say on page 6, 431-361 street lighting, um, our costs have been lowered approximately $30,000 since they put the new street lights in and we our contract was up with our old supplier we went to the Charles Cog or not the Cog the uh, Chamber of Commerce with that supplier and we had really good luck and really good rates and no problems so they sent us over some more information and we went with NG Energy and so our rates are down again and then with the new LEDs we're Saving thirty grand, so that's a plus. Give me one plus. Okay. Um, Lord, that's that's what was it? A four year contract for those LEDs, or eight? I can't remember how many years. For the for the LED lights. 
when, when they started to put them in last year, there was like a, a, a contract to do them, right? Yeah, they're all done. Yeah, but I mean, it was, they were all done really very quickly, but mm -hmm. we have to, we're with, is, was that contract with NG or was that contract no, with No, that our, was with First Energy. Okay. NG is, is our supplier. For the street lighting or for the for rest the street of lighting. the street lighting? Yes. Okay. Yes, so we're getting a low rate for everything. Gotcha. For our traffic signals, everything. Okay. First, and it, we, we were with another com company, and then when that contract was up, mm -hmm. it went to First Energy, which was higher, and then we went to NG, and then it's a lot lower. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are now. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Storm sewer MS4 permits, it, uh, it's up to 50 grand. Um, they are, the DEP is, is continuing to mandate that we do much work as far as the stormwater management goes. Plus, we have public works that have been working on our catch basins. So that's been raised approximately $20,000. Um, what are they doing now besides the dance studio? They've been there for. Pardon me? What are they doing down beside the dance studio? They've been, I don't know. Robinson's been down in the creek down there doing something. Um, that's, uh, uh, I think that's Albert Sand. They're the fire station too yeah. and all that. They're cleaning the line. Yeah, Albert okay. Sand. And I think Independent, um, Independent was their contractor, wasn't it? And Jet Check. And Jet Check. Yes. Yeah. Because they put a bypass line down across the creek. I don't know if you mm -hmm. noticed that. Yeah. They had uh, the area at C53 10, it was off. Mm -hmm. so they had the lids off and, you know, it was a mess down there for a while, so we're done working down there. As far as uh, 437 110, I don't have it highlighted, but I, that, that facility maintenance, that uh, wages, I raised that to $10,000 because our public works department is going to be working with the concrete um, uh, people to work on the outside of the building. And if, if they can assist in anything else, they'll be doing that. That's been increased. Miscellaneous stuff in the sidewalks, we've cut that at $20,000. Um, we were hoping that we can get some help as far as the Greenwood steps go so that we don't have to spend $70,000 on the steps. And we're getting some, we, we got some estimates and they're ridiculous, so trying to uh, save some money and uh, not have to spend the money on the steps. Now we're hearing from residents they don't want. Have you heard I'm not heard. I've heard from residents they use it all the time. Okay. I've heard the same thing. Yeah. Ed Wolf said the other day, he's like, they use it. Fuck, he's a good guy. Look where he lives. Yeah. You know, but it isn't like it's a, it isn't like it's a road. It's people walking. You know. Yeah. It's just funny how they change it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as Scarborough ramp construction, fifty-eight hundred dollars. That's the amount of money that we owe to Mc, uh, to PennDOT for the McLaughlin ADA curb ramps. It might take, they might bill us this year, they may bill us next year, but I've got to keep that expenditure in there until they, until they bill us. Um, when you get on the parks, mower and minor equipment, we have a John Deere 430 that's 30 years old that we need to replace. We got an estimate of $10,000 to replace that, so we'd like to buy a new mower for the, uh, for the public works department, and we threw um, a few thousand dollars in the maintenance supplies to try to do some type of camera system on a Chargers Park until we get our comprehensive plan together and you know, apply for a grant for some permanent. Get those people to demonstrate next year. Get a bidding war started on that for a while, that mower. Get them to come in and demonstrate for a week. Right. I'm, I'm serious because you'd be surprised how that price would come out. The more I'd love to see us get is the one where the arms come up on both sides where it comes to do the bat wings. In the half, yeah, in half the time. Yeah. I remember years ago we priced it was 27000 It was like sticker shock. But at the same time, the amount of labor you save yeah. by coming across the banks and everything else, sure. sending men down there. 
The only other item um, that's on, that's been added is 454-387 on page 7, a comprehensive plan for Cartier's Park. Um, the park is in um, great need of upgrades, especially the roadway coming down, the parking lot. Um, we, we have applied for a grant for $24,000 to upgrade the restrooms. Do I need so, to raise my hands in? Yeah. <laughs> so that will be done, but uh, uh, Gateway can put together a comprehensive plan for us, and then we are able to apply to the DCNR for money, but we need a plan first. When we do that plan, are we going to include the BAA and Beedling? Yeah, we can include whoever, because we, we need to know what the what we need. Right. So you know. ever thought of like you know where Charter's Park is mm -hmm. and then cut through lynches and you have Upper St. Clair's Rec Center. Mm -hmm. And then you go just down the road a little further up on the hill, mm -hmm. you have Fairview Park with South Bay. Yeah. You ever talk maybe we talk to South Bay and Upper St. Clair and say, look, we have three parks that are very close together. Mm -hmm. I mean, to drive to them, they're not close at all. But they're just on the same railroad track line. Mm -hmm. And somehow, hey, let's do some sort of park system between the three communities where you have like a, and tie into our town, mm -hmm. where we have like a, you know, where you can walk to the park and you can walk to Upper St. Clair, walk to Fairview, people who want to hike, whatever, and just make it a whole part of like, nice. a park system. Anyway, it's anyways coming from New York. Golf course, morning, right? Exactly. Day, every morning, there's people, a bunch there's, of them. There's okay. people there all. There's people there all. Right. Right. Sure. Just make it so well, it's more up. Well, and I also think we need to, in this comprehensive, see how viable it is to have a second entrance. Because there are people that won't go down to Chartres Park because right. they're afraid that they're going to be alone. And if you do, if you pro, if you project something like that to these people who get money, and they see how it's commu it isn't just Bridgeville once it's right. no, it's all part of it. Mm -hmm. Then you then you get South Bay and then Bridgeville. You know, they, they fund a bridge down by right. any paraboys in the it's called. It's all over the world, people are always, you know. <laughs> <coughs> just don't do any more landslides. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. No more landslides. No more landslides. Mm -hmm. That would really, you know, a, a park that's owned by Bridgeville, access from South Fayette, mm -hmm. and on ground that's in Upper St. Clair. Mm -hmm. Talk about regional. That would yeah. be a really cool thing. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the concept of that trail, even going down further, and somehow connecting with the bike trail. Well, that's what I was thinking. You eventually want to get that. And we can include that in our plan, right. yeah. which they love it when you're including other municipalities in the plans. And yeah. the people, in the, when you sit there and you start promoting healthy lifestyle choices mm -hmm. in the community, they love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, walking, hiking, biking. And it's it's not practical to be biking on Mayfield Road no. from Hastings or no. or Washington Pike. Exactly, but to you, you could you could come down into that park system mm -hmm. and bike your way all the way to Newberry. Right, and, and you know and you know South Bay is going to want to put connect Hastings up to Fairview Park as mm -hmm. well. Uh, it's time. Yeah. Right. And then. At the end, there's just uh, some Community Day, Memorial Day Parade. That's South Bad's turn this year. And then um, the uh, MMOs have already been calculated. We know what those are. And then the insurances, I usually, I, I usually overestimate those just in case we get surprised. So. You save money on salt this year. Yes, we did. If you do this coming year. Put something in for Christmas decorations. Those are getting tired. Yeah, you know what? The <laughs> you talked to my works, wife. No. <laughs> the public works department came up to me and they said, hey, do we buy Christmas decorations this year? I went, no, go downstairs and put the lights in and just make them. <laughs> now the bows are getting a little tired. Well, they've been, I bought those the year I became manager, which was 2004. So. <laughs> Thanks for black and white. <laughs> they're, they're thirteen First years year. old, so they they look and, and they actually were only two hundred dollars a piece. So that. we actually got our money out of it. Yeah. So yeah. so we will put Christmas light fixtures. That will make public work so happy. <laughs> the uh, 
The other thing that you may need, depending on the number of banners that are sold, uh, the parking authority was, was talking about this on, on Monday, um, is to uh, rehab some of the banners that are starting to show some love. Mm -hmm. So you may need to think about that. Yeah. It's not much, but... I have the, I actually have the email address of everyone <coughs> that has a banner, and I think what, what's going to happen with that is we're going to contact them and say your banner is showing somewhere and you want to. Right, I like that. that's a great idea. Yeah. So, um, HTM, which did all the banners, you know, has all the, all the, uh, Do they keep all the images and they don't, you don't have to go through the whole process, so, it's just a matter of You know, if, if you yeah. want to, it'll be a cost of maybe $25. Mm -hmm. so, that's pretty good. Cool. Yeah, that's so we have those. Uh, Lord, before we get to the sanitary sewer, mm -hmm. uh, John's here for, um, Unfortunately, I was told the meeting's at 7. Hi, John. Uh, hello there. Yeah. That's why I came at like 5 or 7. I thank you, sir. <laughs> you told me 7 or so whatever. And I know you've been all going on for an hour, an hour, it, roughly. It's the drugs. Uh, the reason I came to speak had to do with the Planning Commission and the Ball Street Project, and I didn't know what was in the budget for next year. Evidently, you've already discussed it to an extent, and therefore I'd like to ask what is in the budget. Task Force 2. Only 2. Only 2. Design. Okay. And the meetings. And the meetings. Yeah. And the meetings, yes. Yeah, so That's what I wanted to, if I may address, of course it hasn't been approved yet, but Task Force 2, the preliminary funding concept submission, is items A through G of 13,005 and change. Now Task Force 3, which is the final funding concept submission, ends with a final concept plan and revisions to get to a doggone good estimate of the scope, cost, and time frame involved. At which point either the borough can say, yes, we're going to go forward, or we're going to put it on a back burner, or we're going to scratch the project. I think personally, as a member of the Planning Commission, it would be kind of ludicrous to go through two and then until 2019, whenever you can maybe fund Task Force 3. How long do you think 2 will take that? I do not know. Do not know. And that, I guess that was... The Task Force 2 has uh, 7 subdivisions and Task Force 3 has 6 subdivisions, which is 13 total. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Petricelli is kind of pushing to continue this project to get to a point of knowing where we're really at regarding the Wall Street project. And I know some of you have attended the various meetings. You have copies of the same things that I do on that. Uh, but without a real good estimate and scope and time frame, we're going to be sitting here next year saying we can't recommend anything to council until we get to the end of three. How difficult it would be to put the task force three in? 13,004. Um, I know. 13. <laughs> yeah. I'll give up the Christmas decoration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we had some conversation in, in, in the meeting. Yeah. We all got to be all in on this or not. Right. We are. Is this something that we feel well, is... Well, that's what he's talking. That's what yeah. he's saying. We're not going to... You get to Task Force 3 after that, then you can sit there and say, is this something we want to move forward? Yeah. Um, well, I'll throw this in there. Since word has gotten out from different means of what's going on, you have a lot of businesses down there that, what are you guys trying to do for the future? You know, they, they're, and there's a couple of them that are getting to the point where they're about ready to retire or different things. You know, they want to know sure. what our plans are for the future. And if, if we spread it out another, another year, I mean, some somebody went to a couple of them and like laid it all out, like every. But we didn't even have to, an agreement or anything, you know, to what direction we went. But at the same time, it's out there now. Now you got a couple different businesses that are could be really uh, affected by it if you know the overall plan of what's going to happen. So um, financially, as far as being um, impacted, whether to move, whether you know what direction we're going to go. So. I take it the, the faster we can get there, the, the better the rumor mill stops. 
John, with those different steps, is one step equivalent to one month? I would think that's a guess. There's 13 steps. Do we handle <coughs> one per month, perhaps, if Carolyn's available? Well, it, to be honest, that's part of the reason why I was asking, because yeah, yeah. there were a few meetings she wasn't even available and you guys couldn't move forward with the next step or whatever within mm -hmm. that, that plan. That, to be honest, that was why I said uh, I had suggested just the one, because we'd be able to get through all seven steps in just the plan two. Let's address that, if I may, okay? We have a commission of seven people. One rarely attends. He's always seeming to doing something else other than attending the meeting. Another member goes to Florida October through April. Uh, and finally, <laughs> on a personal note, my wife told me she's retiring next year, finally, and I want to spend some quality time with her. Now, you know, Mr. Cherry, <laughs> that three years ago you said take the chairmanship for a year, and then we'll rearrange. Well, that was three years ago, but next year will be a fourth year for me. And I do not want to serve past 2018 on this commission. Uh, and at the same token, as you know, I've been treasurer for six years. And I do not want to serve past 2018. Come on! I want to spend some quality time with my wife. So, you know, here we are. the papers you look at. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm just, since the council's here, I'm just going to address it. You know, whatever. Uh, so better months in advance. Absolutely. Better to plan for it. Yeah. yeah. Know where, where everything stands for it. So. Yeah. We're going to need, in my opinion, we need to get at least one in one, two more people on the commission that will attend, that will be there, and that will provide insight into the various steps that we need to do in 2018. We'll actually be sending letters. In fact, I was thinking about it today that I've got to get letters out in the first week of December um, to members that their terms are up to see if they wish to re-up. Re well, and, and that goes back to if you're going to get 13 steps, you got to have a quorum, right? Sure. Yeah. And is there something in their bylaws or, or that group that you have to be at so many meetings or you have to no. step down? Because no. we have to have a quorum. Should that even be considered? That you, you volunteered to be it's on the. It's a UPC. It's all voluntary. But that's my point. You're yeah. saying yes. Well, maybe there's somebody out there that would like to be on it. They would attend every meeting. But if you're not going to attend, you can only miss so many meetings. I don't know if that's possible. I just. Just curious. Is that yeah. possible, Tom? Sure, it's possible yeah. if you put it into the, I guess, bylaws. You know, yeah. Well, under the law, you can, it, for cause. It's the same as council. But also, if they're really up, then you should consider that. Well, you have, if, it's, if it's time to re-up the person, then you should take that into consideration as to whether you wish to invite right, the person. Re -up let's put it out right. in general. Yeah. I can send you, I'll send you all an email as to who's, who's going to be re-upping. Okay. But um, to be honest, that was the main reason why I said one is because will you be able to get it done because you, will you have enough meetings to be able to accomplish something? Every 12 year? meetings a year? Well, but do you have 12 and then well, you have a quorum? Yeah, you know, that's another we thing. Always have the, a quorum. They, we always have a quorum. Yeah, you got, you got, no some, you got some new guys there that are really, you yeah, got some yeah. new guys that are really. Yeah. One of which wants to review the comprehensive plan of the park, which was a 2004 plan I want to believe. 2004. Whatever, and, and I know we, we reviewed three sections yeah. as late as last year, but he wants to do it on a periodic basis, which means, in my opinion, we have to take the comprehensive plan, divided it by 11 or 12, and do one a month. So I'm looking forward to January, we're going to have to... Oh, well, that's exciting to hear that they're going to do that. That's what we want. Yeah. So, back to the question at hand. For the task force three, is that something? If, if we get to it, if we don't get to it, we still get billed. I don't assume we don't get billed if we don't get to it. No, probably. if you don't get to it, you don't get billed. The total, if you did both with meetings, would be about thirty-one thousand. You can allocate it without authorizing it to proceed as well. You can include it in your budget. You can include, you have to yeah, but you don't have to spend it. Okay, let's do that. I mean, that's the head of the. Um, I'm fine with that. 
you know, with the stipulation be. that we don't have to do it if we don't get the them guys running. I mean, if you're going to do comprehensive plus that, if we get to know. if we get to like I mean, a budget, budget. I apologize, and then authorize them to proceed actually with phase well, you're gonna, two, you're going to know and make a determination as to how late in the year that you're done with that as to whether you want exactly. to proceed to phase three. I think it, right. it's like October. When they're finishing up the test, right? So we can just hold off until January. Uh, I like to get to the end of three, so we as technicians come to you guys and say, "Hey, here's what it is. What do you want to do?" That means you have to stay through 19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It's a finish. I figured I'd that's right. I didn't do it. Yeah, that that's part of the motion. So maybe we'll get somebody else to join the commission shortly. All right. Why we need to look to our residents. Oh, absolutely. For more. Because yeah. doing projects like this in a proactive manner costs money. Yep. Yeah. So, right. Yep. Yeah. And we as this board want to move forward with yeah. some flood and stuff, not just keep saying we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, and then right. eight years go by and Bruce, I'll note too with regard to your comment on the folks business folks on that street, they actually should be intimately involved in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. Project. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. See, it's a good thing you showed up here. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. For some you didn't, you, didn't, me, <laughs> you didn't have to sit through all the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> again, <laughs> before we get to Santa Resort, Tom has something. Thanks, John. Yeah, to if I could, I have to run down the road for another meeting if I might. Uh, appreciate it. I just gave you a handout on, and you've read some of the reform the Act 172 credits. Um, there's been circulated a model ordinance and resolutions and whatnot for it. Um, the model I took was put together from the model then taken in the North Hills COG, kind of got together and they tried to formulate something that was uh, regional up in that neck of the woods. Um, and then I gave you another sample from another township where they developed the criteria. The ordinances are pretty standard. You do have an option of, of, of giving the credit for real estate taxes and or to wage taxes. I haven't heard any folks approaching the real estate side of any of the wage society. The two groups that I saw in the North Cog, they were capping it, and that's putting a set dollar amount. They were capping it at 300. Another area, may, I think, maybe capping it at 500, where you just not, uh, you know, just, you're just doing a flat dollar amount. Um, and then when do, there's an ordinance that makes it, that enacts it, and that's the one form. I gave you that little piece that's we got, and then right behind there is a, a, a draft ordinance tailored for Bridgeville. And then uh, I highlighted section five, and those are just two sample numbers. You could do, you know, whatever you want. Uh, and then behind that is a resolution. The resolution is where you put in your criteria, because you have to work with your fire department on the eligibility. And I gave Chief Chilio the two samples as well. The resolution on the highlight page, that's what the North Coast COG came up with. It's kind of more generic in nature. The other municipal example I gave you, which I like too, it kind of it gives credit for all kinds of activities that are separate and apart from what you might think traditional firefighting, but does have kind of more, you know, objective, uh, it rewards but requires verification. Yeah, because there is some people that do they can't do the training at the order, but they're there for other things, so it's... Right. I mean, even for associate members, for example, yeah. if you even if you, if you use that kind of a name in your group yeah, or whatever, do. you could tailor something. A third thing from these two that you think more matches yes. and work with public safety. Yep. So um, somebody that just joins but really doesn't participate much is not going to be getting no, the same yeah. credit as... That would not... That you get not. Yeah, so you have to be able to be uh, qualified for this. You need to be this, this, and this. Right. Somebody just joins, the way I'm taking it is if somebody just joins, they got to be there a year yeah, to yeah. set their standard to, yes. get, to get this or not. You have to be certified by the chief, handed into the township that will borrow. And the point they do have, they reward at, it's active status, but there's two types. There's your firefighters and there's others that yes. folks want to reward as well. Just by way of example, for the active fighters, hundred hours they want a year, twenty-five of which should be training, eight hours truck checks. So this is by the way, six out of twelve meetings you make, twenty percent of fundraisers, twenty percent of emergency calls. But even for associate members, 
If you do 40 hours a year, you attend half the meetings, 20% of fundraising throughout the year, you can actually meet the eligibility requirements as well. Yeah. So it encourages the support. I know one volunteer fire department where there's a fellow that, that does their accounting services for them. Yeah, he spends, that's a, lot a, lot of, spends a lot of time doing that sort of stuff and should be and can be rewarded. Because of the time he's put in. Or sometimes more than 100 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just Mike, when he started, yeah. put in a tremendous amount. Oh, yeah. So, so if you, you want to own in that criteria, if you like one or the other between the groups, it's, it's ready to go. No, the I, like the, I like the one with the North Fayette, it, you know, and just take it over to our place and get the, all of the final from over there so I can tell Lori this is the one we're going to And if you guys are fine with that, it's ready to right. authorize them. All right, cool. And whether you, whatever the amount, like I said, that amount's a flat amount that you can do. So it's not a percentage? No, not in the way. There's a cap of 20, but it can't be more than 20% of your income. That's only okay, but but we have know. to determine how much that amount is. Yes. Okay. Right. And it's kind of filling the blank on that. Okay. Like and there's an instructive guidance that PISA put out, actually, that I included. So then we could have a good idea of what the maximum of it would be. Mm -hmm. Exposure. Mm -hmm. Okay. What you gave me about, you gave me 20 active. Something like that. Is it 20 or 25? It was 20. Yeah. Yeah. Now you'll see. In that but state, that could change because of some of this here. Okay. By a few. And I don't know if it happens in your neck of the woods or not. I'm cautioning. There's a, you see these zapped from that form. I left it in there for discussion. But they have a blank. It's in there for the volunteer fire corners. You can't limit that. Something happens to live in Bridgeville, but they have to be a volunteer or another fire department for some reason. They actually would be eligible. That usually doesn't occur, but you have some overlap. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that occurs. Yeah, so there's a few. And everybody has decided, hey, it's going to happen both ways everywhere, and if it's a beneficial thing, the fact that one person gets a 300 or Yeah, because this could change if we go with the associates, which we have a few associate members down there, they would be eligible for it. We have the Chestnut Street Fire Department. That was a long time ago. And, uh, and you mean that way. Yes. <laughs> so really, Station we, five. we have to decide how much of a tax credit that we want to levy, correct? So can you do it as the 100 hour person different than no. the 40 hour? No, you, if they're it's eligible, eligible, they're eligible. Okay. Those are just different ways of meeting eligibility. We do have an associate program, so. I'm sorry, that's what I was referring to. So if they're associate, they get a lesser credit than they... No, they don't get a lesser credit, but you have to... Their active is lesser than the active member because they don't do the fire calls, they don't do the training, anything else, so they're not... They're not as However, you are at the same time, as long as they're bona fide and putting in the hours, trying to also reward the folks that support you. Um, that they may not be running into burning houses, but they're spending a lot, a lot of time in yeah. yeah. the legislature. Right? Fundraisers, yeah. Oh, yes. Events, fundraisers, probably. I'd rather go to a burning house and do fundraisers. Sign them up, Bill. Try to read on recording. No. I'll see you in the next one. If you've got a great member, you can put a great member. So, what if we have a great member? If you wish to authorize the advertising, then you can maybe be sincere. You guys can decide that between now and December and still forward with the advertising if conceptually you're okay with it, because that's a no, and in fact, some, I saw a community that actually enacted it and it did a retroactively effective date into 2017. Oh, so, then that doesn't so now you're not going to go back into 2017, but if you were saying if it meandered into January, could you make it still 2018? Yes. Yeah, okay. If you're trying to get it put in your budget and all that stuff and do it in December, you could authorize the advertisement, you don't have to enact it, um, or you could table it. Or if you come up with that number, that doesn't change materially what you're advertising. Okay. Because a lot of times in the captioning, the advertising doesn't put any amount anyway, it just says the is providing for a tax credit for 
volunteer fire departments. Thanks. Have a good holiday. Thank you. All right, Tom. All right, sanitary score. Okay, sir, fund. Must be one of the best change. Big detour there. Yeah. We just received this week that uh, Alcasan is raising their rates seven and a half percent. The rate structure will be seven forty-two for thousand gallons of water plus a service charge to fifteen sixty per quarter. So, um, what we've done, and right now we have a reserve in our sanitary sewer fund. Um, we are we are. Budgeting for level five corrections, um, I budgeted $416,787. I talked to Joe um, about what projects are out there. And what, they'll, what they normally do is I give them a number that we can work with. And they usually work within our parameters. And it, it's usually way below what number I give them. So I didn't recommend raising the rates this year um, besides the uh, Alcasan rate increase, which is uh, so it's required. Yeah, it's seven and a half percent. And that's required. So on, on the agenda you can see the Alcasan rates, the borough rates and their per um, service charge that's billed monthly. So we, we have to have a public hearing on that um, in December. Um, as far as the, rep the refuse fund, um, we're still good as far as that goes. We're on, on the last year of our contract um, with them, so we'll be bidding our contract next year. A lot of people like that. The state, the state. They do a great job. They, you know, the e-waste and the hazardous stuff, you know, it's a pain in their butt to get rid of. Just call them up and they come and they take it. I get, they they give the people cards yeah. um, to send how they like it and whatever. I get tons of them and they just say they love it. Yeah. Um, so, so you don't have all that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have to I don't have big TV. I bring my TV here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to take your TV to an uh, e-waste <laughs> thing and they charge you. And, yeah, it's, it's a nice program. <laughs> It, so, it is, but people got to use it. You got the newsletter that they read it. Deb puts that in all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. you got to like beat it in your head. Because yeah. one across the street, the TV set's been sitting there for two months. Yeah. I seen the truck go up today. I, they might have picked it up it today. Might, finally. Okay. 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 Yeah. And, and once a year, send the e guy send guy over the year they send out the flyers with the numbers. Yeah. They send them out once a year. So so pay attention to that. And maybe, maybe that's something we could do in the. The text message, the mm -hmm. website on the, your, on the main page, your HHW, blah, 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 Facebook blah, blah, blah. page. Yeah. As, as we get further along, you know, yeah. people will be more tech savvy. Yeah. Also, people are starting to pick up on the idea. Yeah. They understand word of mouth is passing. Oh, yeah, right. this is how it's done in Bridgeville. Right. I'm getting a lot of cards, and I'm surprised. Exactly. You know, they're all, I've had paint for 15 years, you know. Yeah. And it, they just send packaging for it, and they come to your door, and they pick it up, and they take it away. Nice. And then we get credit for that on our uh, on 904 um, recycling. report, recycling report, um, that we get reimbursed for some of the recycling. So. Well, and it's only more encouragement with right. advertising. Right. Mm -hmm. Capital improvement funds, I, we pretty much went over this. Um, I broke everything down as far as the revenue side and as far as the expenditure side. Um, and right now, the fund balances. So, and I, as I said, I still have to uh, transfer that money. I'll probably do it in December. Before we leave the sanitary sewer fund, uh, Lori, accurately put it out there. You come up with a number and Gateway's going to put together something that fits into that number mm -hmm. as far as repairs. I again, can we please get a list of these repairs and how they are going to reduce the amount of inflow and infiltration? We all know we have a problem. 
but we are not, we aren't actually measuring how much we're solving the problem. We're not, we're not addressing you know, the inflow and infiltration, we're not locating it. You know, Gateway said that they were going to do some flow isolation studies this year. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, I think that they've done them, I don't know the exact results. Mm -hmm. But we're spending 400 and, what, 16,000 you said, Lori? That's what I budgeted. Right, That's we're budgeting 416,000 dollars. Yeah. How much inflow is that supposed to reduce? How much inflow did we reduce last year by what we did? I think on some of the, uh, of the reports that have to go into the DEP, they, so some of them. Isn't there some word that has to be back? Because DEP, that's how they regulate the flow. Study, right. the, the, flow is, the flow isolation studies, but there's not, I've not, I've not seen in anything I've looked at, and that's what I've asked for. If it exists, you know, that's what I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money, yeah. and I we have got to maintain our sewer system. We have got to repair it. I, I'm not suggesting we shouldn't, but we should we should see what the projects are. The people have we should we I would like to know how we're fixing it and whether we're solving the problems. I still believe that somewhere on the on the uh, our, on the arterial or what, what do they call it. The, the, the C5310 line, what's mm -hmm. it called? Uh, C5310. Yeah, the, that line. I have got to believe that there is a crack somewhere that when this creek gets high, it just pours in. And hey, that thing's been camera how many times by how many multiple agencies, Lori? Mm -hmm. And have you heard anybody say, oh yeah, we found something? No. Now, I think they keep looking in dry weather and the creek gets high and just shh. I will ask them. Please, and, you know, there, there are so many new modern technologies. We talked about it, if you remember last year, with the, the side launching cameras and the cameras that can go when it's, when it's wet weather, so you're not putting the camera into a dry pipe, and you can actually see where water's coming from. And we are getting ready to, uh, we'll be doing the backup for the next project this year. They have the information regarding that. So. And that'll be at the, at, the, at the lateral in the main. Mm -hmm. So it won't be going in the basement. So hopefully that will help. The people that did their own, are we going to give them back credit? Are we going to give them credit? Or? We've got to decide what kind of credit we're going to give them, but I think we should give them some credit, yes. So when we start that project, I think we have to decide what, maybe to find out what it costs mm -hmm. for each one. And then give them some kind of credit on it. So, yeah. yeah. As far as the liquid fuels fund goes, it, the liquid fuels fund is in and out, and it comes from the state. There's a calculation um, 15.41 square miles, 5,148 um, residents. Uh, so it's. Uh, they have their own calculation. This year we'll be receiving $148,174. Um, we do have uh, approximately $53,000 um, left over from this year to be earmarked for next year's paving. We don't have a list together yet. Um, we have to do an exam examination of the roadways, plus take a look at our law to see what has been done and in what time frame. So we'll have a list for you as far as what needs to be done within that um, within that budget. But we, we continue to work on that. So and as far as that goes, that's all I have, really. Thank you very much, Thanks for not the easiest thing to do. Did you guys want a number on oh, oh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I put a paper clip on it. <laughs> On my, uh, Thank you, Tim. Yeah, so I'm thinking 350 for meeting that includes coming here, setting it up, recording, then sound editing, removing HVAC noise from the sound later on, syncing up, preparing it for social media, and so forth. Okay. So, so 350. 5,000 a year. 
Board of 200. Can you touch that in the budget? Just use that number. Sure. I have five. I have five thousand in there, but that's for our. Uh, that that's for our work with the with the web. Yeah, with so the web. going to have really twelve meetings. Don't you have to have hearings? Televised it. Usually, he puts the yeah. hearing into the meeting. Okay. It's all. You're usually doing the yeah, right. Okay. So you need another five thousand. Yeah, five thousand on top of that. Then. So that would that would uh, ninety two hundred dollars. Government only speaking. Four oh seven three twelve. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is a budget. Right. And what I'll do tomorrow is I'll, I'll make all the changes and I'll send you the draft. And uh, it's already been advertised that the uh, draft will be available for public inspection on the 27th. It will also be put on the website with, with what's your name? Joe's. <laughs> wow. Quickly she forgot it. Yeah. Let's see who knows uh, how to do PowerPoint next time. <laughs>